is enough and it's time for a change. Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line. Cause Stone Cold Simpson. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this very special edition of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Episode 125, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Episode 125 Extra. Now, I've done a lot of extra shows on that YouTube channel this week. But... Like I said, guys, we all represent in SummerSlam. It's coming off a SummerSlam week, uh, weekend for me anyway. And uh, yeah, we're going to do the 10 things WWE wants you to forget about SummerSlam. All in aid of SummerSlam today. So I was going to do this on the podcast, but I couldn't. So I thought I'd give you it exclusive to the YouTube channel. YouTube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matter. Subscribe to that channel. Also, download it for free on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash wrestling underscore matters underscore podcast. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get into it. Summer, 10 things WWE wants you to forget about Summer Slam. There's a lot of things, actually. They probably want you to forget about the Warrior, not sh- threatening not to know show Summer Slam 91. They probably want you to forget about a lot of things, especially the Chris Benoit Randy Orton thing where Randy Orton beat him in 2004 because we all know what happened with the Chris Benoit situation. But in any event, in any event, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Number 10, the 10 things WWE want you to forget about SummerSlam. And number 10 is the very first match of SummerSlam ending in a draw, which I believe was in 1988, sorry, 1988, headlined by the Mega Powers versus the Mega Bucks. And the very first match that ended in a draw was, I believe, the Rougeos and the British Bulldogs. Yeah, the Rougeos and the British Bulldogs ended in a draw. Now, if you know the shoot interviews and everything, these two really didn't, these two teams, behind the scenes at least, did not like each other. But I thought it was a good match to kick off. That was probably the only downfall of it. It ended in a draw. And like I say, if you if you listen to the uh, shoot interviews, you know why. Now, number nine is very, very interesting, guys. Despite the fact, if I remember correctly, I remember sitting in my living room in, in my old place, uh, when I, the place where I grew up in, uh, when I was at school in Beechwood at the time. I believe this was live. I don't remember it. You know when it says Sky Sports at the, at the top right-hand corner and it says live underneath? I don't remember it that very well. But apparently, SummerSlam 1992 was taped. It was a taped pay-per-view. Headlined by Macho Man vs. The Ultimate Warrior. Also having probably the greatest match in SummerSlam's history, British Bulldog, Bret Hart for the Intercontinental Championship, which closed the show out and made WrestleMania look like something out of Toys R Us. Because, well, let's face it, you'd want... That was a kind of that was a WrestleMania caliber match that they had, and it was also announced by Vince McMahon and Bobby Heenan, and it was a really good show. It really was. I didn't know until I actually saw this countdown that it was actually taped. Shows you how much I know. But either way, whether it was taped or not, who cares? Quite frankly, <laughs> who cares? Quite frankly, who cares? Number eight, ladies and gentlemen, in this is Ric Flair. And Macho Man Randy Savage. Now, the reason why this is in the countdown. Yes, they fought at WrestleMania. Yes, they fought many times on house shows for the WWE title. And and Savage has won via DQ and everything. But what they didn't want you to know, or what they want you to forget, is the fact, I believe it was 1988. I believe it was 1988. On 89, it was somewhere around about that. Three years earlier, prior to their WrestleMania, I believe, they won, They were scheduled to go at SummerSlam. It was going to be Macho Man. Yeah, it was 1988. It was going to be Macho Man versus Ric Flair at SummerSlam. This was back when Ric Flair was ruling the NWA. But, you know, it was meant to be 
that caliber match. But as we all know, Ric Flair back then at least was loyal to the NWA and proved that. So they had to go a different route. Number seven, which I believe was the Mega Bucks route. They did the Mega Bucks and the Mega Powers. Number seven was Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon 2, the rematch from WrestleMania 10 was almost Shawn Michaels versus Sid. Now, we all know what happened in WrestleMania 10, the big ladder match, probably the greatest match, one of the greatest matches in WrestleMania history. But the rematch that they had at SummerSlam was scheduled to be Shawn Michaels versus Sid. That's right. It was scheduled to be that and everything. But, thankfully, they decided to go with the ladder match route and have, you know, the rematch of all rematches at uh, the ladder match at uh, WrestleMania 10. Number six was the Mountie getting sexually assaulted in prison. Yes, you heard me correct, ladies and gentlemen. 1991, J-House, the J-House match. Big boss man one-on-one with Mountie. The winner goes to jail. Well, the loser goes to jail, rather. And Mountie lost the match and ended up going to jail. And there was all these segments for the rest of the match or for the rest of the pay-per-view, there was all these segments where the Mountie got fingerprinted and whatnot. The last segment was him, the Mountie that is, begging to get released. And this guy walks up looking like he wanted to sexually assault him. Whether he did or not, that's a story for another day. But a great way to end that. And that's what, that was number six in what WWE wants you to forget, ladies and gentlemen, about SummerSlam. I don't think we can forget about that. Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth were already married. That's number five. They are... The whole match made in heaven thing in 1991, my very first SummerSlam and my very first WWE pay-per-view in general. Macho Man and Elizabeth were already married. This was like them renewing their wedding vows. And what better way to do it than in front of the world on pay-per-view. But if you see the Coliseum video version of the SummerSlam, there was an extra bit after it. Extra bit being the wedding reception. Now, they all had the wedding reception, all had the party, the first dance, but the wedding reception was ruined because Elizabeth goes to open a box, a present box, and out pops a snake. Jake Roberts and The Undertaker interfered and ruined the reception, all until Sid Justice basically chases them away and saves them, which is a memorable moment. I don't know why they never put that on the DVD versions of Summer Sun 91. They should. They really, really should. But I don't think they ever. I don't think they ever did. But they really, really should, because that is a moment in its own right. Number four, Jackass versus Umaga. Now there was an episode of Raw where Steve-O and Chris Pontius came on and basically got their asses kicked by Umaga. And apparently Umaga wasn't very happy that Steve-O didn't sell the moves and everything. He just basically laughed. Well, Vince McMahon wanted to turn that into an angle and have the Jackass crew versus Umaga, and I'm guessing some more WWE talent, and have a stump match at the 2007 SummerSlam, the night Triple H returned to face Booker T. The things he comes up with, you know, you know, the things he comes up with. Seriously. I mean, this is the same guy that even considered the idea of having Justin Bieber go over on Bray Wyatt. And if you go back and check my other podcast, you know how much I feel about that. And the thought of that was even considered makes me want to quit my life. But in any event, moving on, I digress. Number three was Eddie Guerrero losing his shit, rather, to with Vicky. Now, this was during the line of match. Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio for custody of Dominic. And you can see during the spot in the match, you could see that Eddie Guerrero shouted, Damn it, where is Vicky? Somewhere, somewhere around about that thing. It wasn't very good or anything like that. But you could see him when he falls off the ladder, he loses his shit at Vicky and shout, Damn it, where is Vicky? And this, that, and the other. You know, because Vicky was supposed to come out at that point, but she didn't. She messed the spot up. So obviously. As you can tell, if you watch the match back, Eddie wasn't too pleased. A fan nearly ruined The Undertaker's spot at the 2004 SummerSlam. Now, what I'm talking about is the fact that he almost gave away the fact that the limousine that Undertaker chokeslam JBL through was actually open. Now, the, there was a spot 
in the match where JBL gets choked slammed right th through the limousine. As we all know, if you choke slam on top someone on top of a car, it's not going to go through. So obviously that was cut to the point where JBL could go through without any mishaps or whatever. Well, a fan nearly ruined it. And if it hadn't been for the security guards and whoever else stopped him, he would have gave the game away, which he didn't. So thankfully, whoa. You know, it was actually great. And now, number one basically goes back to number nine, quite frankly, and it's part two from number nine because, as we all know, SummerSlam was taped. SummerSlam 92 was taped. But number one, it was a miracle that, and it was in a way, considering it was taped, that SummerSlam 92 was actually good. And it was. You know, the greatest match in SummerSlam's history, British Bulldog versus Bret Hart for the Intercontinental Championship. You had the main event, which was all right, Macho Man and uh, the Ultimate Warrior for the title, Undertaker vs Kamala, Virgil vs Niels, Money Inc vs Legion of Doom, and a drunk, very loaded Hawk, it was okay. SummerSlam was actually really, really good. SummerSlam 92, that is. They really need to bring some, do some more stuff like that over here sometime soon. I don't think they will, because like I say, SummerSlam 92, as we just found out in this countdown, was actually taped. So, you know, and and the UK are five hours ahead of the Americans anyway, so... It'll all have to work out at some point. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this Wrestling Mass Podcast Extra. I hope you enjoyed the uh, countdown. This was supposed to be on the podcast, but... I decided to put on an extra because I didn't, I couldn't fit in on the podcast. So I decided to put it on the as an extra show as well, exclusive to the YouTube channel. Subscribe for more podcasts, weekly podcasts each and every week. WCPW, CWC, which is close to coming to an end, and a few other stuffs here and there as well. Plus, maybe some extra shows from the Wrestling Matters podcast. Also, the Wrestling Matters podcast, which you can listen to on SoundCloud. Swerve Talk Network and the YouTube channel as well. So be sure to check that out as well. Also, I'm working with a few people as well. Uh, check out the Talk Brunch crew as well. Uh, go to their SoundCloud pages and stuff like that as well. I'm working with them on a few things. So hopefully things will work out. And I'm looking to go on their show at some point. But whether that will work or not remains to be seen. But like I say, I'm sure we can work around something. Also, as this is going out, tune in to episode 126 of the Wrestling Matters podcast coming up this week because it is all about the main topic is The Miz. You want to know what the hell I'm to why it's The Miz is the main topic? Tune in this coming Monday. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anthony Walker for the Wrestling Matters channel and the Wrestling Matters podcast. Bin you a fun farewell. And remember, guys, as it should be, Wrestling Matters. Peace out. Well, enough is enough. And it's time for a change! Professional wrestling! This is it! This is us standing up! Yes! 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 That's 1314! Make it death! Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line. Cause Stone Cold Simpson.